find it's not acting so let me quickly see where it stops uh, somebody has written actually professor d balasubramaniam has written that the price that missed the master so that was written about him because he didn't get some of the prizes but it, uh, as it, as it is said you may forget many noble laureates you may remember may not remember but as long as you continue to work on protein you have to remember professor dn ramachandra always and all the time so that is the mark he has left and to give a centenary lecture we have professor tesh pal singh from aims one of the distinguished structure biologists probably one of the highest contributor in the protein data bank the structures and so best person to talk about dna today and another good thing both share the same month of birthday so that is another good thing about that so with that i now request <laughs> so i think all the great crystallographers share the same month <laughs> so so now i request uh, our director dr dinka salamki to introduce the speaker and because the best person to introduce he was a senior also in the same lab so dr salamki Uh, he 
He actually did his PhD in physics department and moved to biophysics after finishing his PhD and then uh, went to uh, uh, on a faculty position to Indore, did quite a few things along and longest time that he has spent in his career is in all India Institute of Medical Sciences. Uh, after having worked with uh, uh, Robert Huber, the Nobel laureate for photo photosynthetic reaction center in Germany. And he, when he joined Ames, I think he was the youngest professor in all India Institute of Medical Sciences. And uh, he continues to be at uh, all India Institute of Medical Sciences and continued to contribute to the protein data bank with the same vigor. So I'm really very proud to have uh, Professor T.P. Singh to be speaker today to deliver this first uh, uh, Ramchandran Centenary Lecture, Professor T.P. distance. <clears throat> I don't know how to begin. I think first and foremost I should thank you and me for putting me into this. Generally, I enjoy talking informally, but making lectures is not a very great idea. So sometimes we have to make you said something about G.N. Ramachandran, but I should tell you that he entered IIC a few months before I entered. And many times we don't realize it. You see, Nobel Prize is not an issue. I think Neil was saying something. His contributions are globally outstanding. They were, they were greater or similar who got the Nobel Prize. But the trick was played that when he proposed, he was the first to propose the structure of collagen triple helix. And he proposed a structure, somebody else proposed afterwards. And there was a small difference that number of hydrogen bonds, 1.8 or 1.2. So one called two hydrogen bonds or one hydrogen bond. And it's very easy to create controversy when you do molecular modeling and you try to do the calculations. So that controversy went on and that was a deliberate one. But subsequently, experimentally, it was proved that the model proposed by Ramachandran was correct and the other model was not correct. So therefore, uh, uh, these sort of things happen in science. But I think in science, I have experienced over the years, for many, many years. I have been into this business for more than 50 years now. Science is something which you enjoy all the time. That's the biggest prize you have, and that's all one should think about. So, I think I go back to the first days. Neil is not really happy. I go back to the first slide. Okay. His title also sort of, you wonder, and I also wonder when this pandemic began, I think everybody else. He started doing something on, on how to deal with coronavirus, how to deal with COVID-19. <clears throat> so I saw that even my co-workers, in my postdocs, I was, we should be doing the structures and things. They started doing something for this, doing some molecular modeling and <laughs> docking, auto docking, and they were bringing out a new molecule every day, which will cure COVID. COVID-19. Some people contacted me from oncology department and said that we have some drugs to treat cancer, but we feel that they can treat COVID also. Can you help us? I said, which way? I said, do some molecular modeling for us. The clinicians said it. I said, okay. So my student did some auto docking. I said, stop this auto docking. I did manual work and made some a good sort of thing. And they, they, they wanted to publish. I said, don't, I won't be an author in this, but you published. And they published. And they were very happy and excited that 
they have given us a new molecules to treat COVID-19. So that was the impact. So many times when I was looking at the structures, analyzing the structures, I find that analyzing the structure is the greatest pleasure in life. There's nothing better than this. But then I found people around me who were publishing too many papers. And <laughs> I was not sending many papers at that time. Because they were, the co-workers were not there, the conditions were not good. I was getting a little bit nervous. <laughs> so, then I have to say nothing to me. I think I will not be lured by these things. I will continue to do what I have been doing. But today you see that eventually I had to fall in line. And I had to find some ways and means to get into this business to, to be with everybody else. So this is how this title is. So I think this is one slide which partly I borrowed from a famous professor from CS, probably the, the general of CSIR, from Dr. Mashenko. He had this desire to show, to, to show things in a very exciting manner. But why I like this slide, you see, if you see in that, these are all individual excellence. And this was, of course, I would say the greatest excellence. But thereafter, you see, it's all sort of collective contribution that India has made to the world and to themselves. But this was the last individual contribution. And to, to, in my mind, I should tell you also that Still, lots of times when you have some extraordinary scientists in your country and around you, you may not be directly interacting with them, you may not be working with them, but indirect influence is enormous. When I passed my MSc, I passed MSc with axiotherapy from the university, sort of, in one sense, I would say remote university, University of Allahabad. Once upon a time, this was a great institution. Uh, if you get a first friend, and you, a lot of your teachers like you to work with them. So I joined PSD. At that time, somebody showed me an advertisement from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. With Ramachandran's big picture. I did not know who Ramachandran was. Big, big picture. If you want to think about proteins, go to IIC. If you want to think about DNA, go to IIC. It was a very exciting advertisement. At that point, I would say, was one of the greatest contributions of Professor Dhawan, who was director at that time. He brought many, many outstanding scientists, including ECG Sudarshan, GN Ramachandran, and everybody, he went around. But that was a difficult time to begin with, because Bangladesh war just ended, and our conditions were not good. That's why. Vijayan's appointment was delayed by four years or so. So his, his name appearing there, though I did not know, but my decision was not correct. I applied there. And when I applied there, normally, you know, many, people, many students who may get ranks, but they are, they get ranked by them because they sort of mug up things, and they don't perform well in interviews. So anyway, at that time, there was no proper molecular biology syllabus. So it was in physics. So I appeared in an interview and they asked, of course, the physics people normally I find that I had given some interviews in the physics department. They asked bad questions, unlike biology people. So, <laughs> so it was an interview, but it was a bad interview. Except that <laughs> they asked some small thing in the x ray crystallography, only one question I answered that. But I was selected because they wanted, Vijay wanted somebody in crystallography. And after I was selected, I didn't want to join Vijay. <laughs> so I felt crystallography is very, very sort of, not very exciting thing. I did not understand that. So that's how I think this was Ramachandran's effect. And earlier times in IIC Bangalore, on the first day of opening on 16th August, they always have a welcome dinner. There used to be very few students. So when in the welcome dinner, I sat on the table, and by chance, Ramachandran came late, he also sat on the table at the same time. 
So you encounter if somebody is around, and these things have a lot of impact. So I think there may be lots of people in this audience who may not be knowing about him very much. Just some small introduction I will make about him like this. So this slide you already seen that I think he was really a word was coined by somebody who wrote his autobiography and he was really, if you look at his contributions, they were outstanding. Outstanding in true sense that he gave that triple legal structure of calling the first one in the world at that time in 1950, early 1950s. It was a great discovery when somebody created controversy, he worked hard and created this Ramachandra's Paisa Land, which is an essential requirement for well built in structures. And also, his group gave these terms known as beta terms. When a protein folds, it folds, and this folding is known as a term, beta term, very specific conformation terms. So, this was a very, also a very unique contribution. So, these three contributions were absolutely remarkable. He was a very extraordinary figure, there is no doubt about this. Dinkel mentioned that these eccentricities. I think that was an impact of the place where he did PhD. <laughs> you see, if you will see in the map, yeah, I write it here. His period in Meadows was extraordinary. And this kind of combination with place and a mentor, maybe you see the next slide, you will realize this. Some picture is there. It's taking time. Anyway, there is some picture with four people sitting. Dorothy Hodgkin, Linus Pauling, and Dr. A. R. Mugalia, and Jill Alton. Where is you have hidden this picture? <laughs> Neil said that he had edited my slides in that in that short period. You should have come earlier. So uh, this slide was particularly important for Dilkar and you, Pushkar, also, that, you know, when you talk about scientific contributions from any individual, it's not just individual, it's a whole lot of team. As a director, you have to be a mentor and nothing else. So he, he had a great, great mentor in Dr. Mudalia, the vice chancellor there, and, of course, place might have had some impact. So many, many people said afterwards that your biggest mistake was to leave Madras. Because when he came to ISC Bangalore, he remained for 20 years. And in Madras, he was, for how many years? He was given here. For the 17 years. That's why. For 17 years, he made such remarkable discovery. And for 20 years in ISC, your institution, he did very little. So that is something. There's some connection. <laughs> so I think once Ramasamy remarked in one of the gatherings, T. Ramasamy, who was director, who was secretary of DST, he said, I hope this goes to everybody, this message, that ISC can produce good science, but it's a background science. The peaks come from elsewhere. So this is how they said about to explain what GNR did. He was there before he joined Madras. ISC Bangalore. He was there afterwards also. Okay, so this is another, the, another very funny thing. When I first time went to Madras, at that time it was Madras, I stayed in the guest house of Sierra Rai. I saw a board like Triple Helix. I didn't see this board anywhere in the university myself. The Department of Biophysics and Crystallography had no trace of GNR afterwards. But then I saw something in Sierra Rai. So it was a very a very interesting. When somebody was asking, was he working here? He was not working here. Then I saw one more thing, and I had some arguments on this. Intech created a facility on protein science. There was a GNR, GNR Ramachandran Protein Center. 
and the greater respect to the human being. I think this is the most stupid thing to do. Why don't you give a structure of college? So no, 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 they will think that we are working on, we're not working on college. But you can't, you can't try the hemoglobin. Nobody works in hemoglobin anyway. So, so these are very peculiar things. But if you go to other labs internationally, if you go to this Linus Pauling's lab, you see Alpha Helix. You go elsewhere, you see what they have done. And when I first entered Max Planck Institute in uh, Germany, the structures of proteins at that time were just happening. It was the most exciting thing to happen. And everywhere I found photographs of protein structures on the walls of Max Planck Institute, which was newly made, where Huber was working. So this is how you need to highlight. So when you go to NIA, they made some funny three line, three directions. <laughs> they should have made some antibodies, but Dinkar has worked on. So that sort of mindset we don't have. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean the structures of antibodies, not just uh, this talk. So the, the question is that we need to recognize contributions. We need to feel happy about this. We don't need not associate with individuals. I think this is how we can inspire our generations. So that is how I, I feel we should think about this. Then I they called some last year, Dr. Karthi, professor of biophysics and crystallography in the University of Madras. He called me and said, <coughs> we want to celebrate the GNR centenary. Either you don't deserve it to deserve it all. You don't have any trace of GNR material. You first call your department, the GNR material department of biophysics, or something like that. Then they came out with some, some name here. This is the name proposed by them, home of collagen structure. I said, this is not correct. Make it like this. So that both look like his. It looks like collagen is something else, he's not the price I meant. So, so this discussion is going on. Now they are thinking that this department can, be, can have some kind of board in front of them. So these are things symbolic, but they inspire young minds, they inspire generations, and that's what we need to think about. Okay, so as I was also, little bit, not too much, internally or externally pushed into the direction of thinking about everybody was talking about SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. So I thought that some way I must be doing this stupid science if I have no relationship with my science has no relationship with SARS-CoV-2. So I started thinking on this. So first thing is that you have to do some graph. Hey, this graph is okay. Hmm? There's no technical problem here. There was probably an interview. So this is some map you pick up from somewhere. But the idea is that I think this is one of the most widespread pandemics, one of the most. And you can see that it's globally all over. Somewhere darker, somewhere less dark, but it covered the whole world. So this is this is what everybody talks. We not need not talk much about this. And then of course this is just an introduction slide in the sense that everybody knows what this virus is and which are the proteins of interest, particularly for those who want to make anything related to drug discovery. So coming back to this particular slide now, when you talk about infections caused by viruses or bacteria, you normally think on these four lines. You look at innate immunity and you look at this adaptive immunity and of course, role of antibiotics, we cannot deny, and the synthetic antibacterials, we have made little, uh, made little contribution. And I, I generally feel that the cause of this little contribution, basically, our chemistry has not been very great. Lots of people don't like this, but I think this is one reason that if we talk all the time about plant products, about common proteins, about all kinds of things. 
that means we don't have a strong chemistry support. So anyway, these are four, four ways you can fight infections. So we thought that everybody is talking about, of course, vaccines could be made, could make vaccines. Everybody is talking about repurposing, drug discovery, docking, out of docking, and molecules that are coming left, right, and center. Antibiotics, some people are even looking at, at modifying antibiotics. And here, of course, is left for those who are making vaccines. And of course, some people are making uh, viral batch or biosimilar antibodies here. But this is something nobody talks about. When you say innate immunity, you consider this as a part of your germline that you can do nothing. It is there, it is working or not working, it's good or bad. You don't examine this, you don't think about this. So this is something we thought that we should look at something different than everybody else. So when you do structures, originally crystallographic people who are doing structures, they would do structures of any protein. Earlier times, you know, protein could be crystallized, a big thing, a bigger structure is a bigger thing. So I also began from this serine protease, which is very common, and we did some work on them. And then, of course, you diversify. And eventually, I, these, this class of proteins, which are secreted, which are secreted into the body fluids, the part of the body fluids, and they, they act as antibacterial agents, and their expressions go up when there is infection. We were, have been working on these things, working binding proteins. Yeah, I'll share with you. Some slides, uh, your co-workers apply their minds as well, and you don't notice them. So they <laughs> I think you can comment all the time. I would welcome everybody. Don't, we don't make this a silent presentation. Say it again. <laughs> I, I moved on from that slide now. <laughs> so, okay, so now you look at this some exploitation of something which your body makes, your body makes, human body makes, and other animal bodies also make. And it is very natural that what proteins different animals make to fight infections, their quality may be different because they face different level of challenges against infections. So in the process, you could identify how to export these proteins. And of course, they are directly related since they are secreted from these sites, you can see that. This is very relevant to COVID-19, uh, COVID the SARS-CoV-2 virus and these are the entry points for this virus. So why not these proteins could be exploited for this purpose? So that's very natural. Now we worked a lot on these proteins before, but recent times I have been concentrating on this class of proteins, which directly recognize invading microbes, particularly bacteria. They bind to cell wall molecules of bacteria, and they bind them with great affinity and then these proteins. <coughs> you see, I was mainly spending time on this class of proteins in recent times. But when the COVID-19 happened, and lot, everybody was examining that, I started focusing more on this. See, this is a protein which works as an antibacterial molecule. But this is an enzyme which requires substrate. So there is a scope here that if it requires substrate, does your pro body produce enough substrate for these enzymes which are overexpressed during infections? And it does not. It's, it's natural. Once of HCL, this thiocyanate concentrations vary. This is enzymatic uh, production. So there is no control on this. So could we think of some kind of additional substrate? And if you can supplement these substrates, 
when this enzyme may produce a good amount of antibacterial agent. That was the that was the thinking. So then, this is just to prove that there is a right location. This enzyme acts that this way and produces very strong antibacterial. Converts the substrate. Whichever substrate this enzyme can convert into a product is highly antibacterial. Now the question is, you see, we knew earlier that enzymes act upon substrates they produce products. But this is a very little more complicated thing. This requires hydrogen peroxide for the first step, which is produced by some reaction here, which is abundance. The, this enzyme this expands enough and this is enough and H2O2 supply is never a problem. In fact, H2O2 supply is oversupply. That's why you have an enzyme to take care of excess of H2O2. So this is the first step. So this step has to occur first. Your substrate is not going to bind to the enzyme directly. In the sense that this reaction has to take place and the substrate can only bind to this intermediate compound one. And once you have this, then you have the reaction and then you have product. If you make this step before this step, there won't be any product. This is very, very important that S2O2 has to interact first with this enzyme and then the substrate has to interact. I remember that, I should tell you one more story. There was a time when I joined Huber's lab. He has been thinking for a while in those years, in 70, late 70, that how to trap enzyme substrate intermediates. The reaction is fast in crystalline state. You don't trap the product comes out and you don't, don't trap the intermediate the substrate. So he set up a lab put x-ray machine, one room at 4 degrees Celsius, next connected room at minus 30 degrees Celsius, the third connected room at minus 80 degrees Celsius. And none of his co-workers, after having this much investment, none of his co-workers there were prepared to enter minus 80 degrees Celsius, so you have to go and mount a crystal, put a casing. In those times, the data collection process was very slow, precession camera, you have to give exposure for half an hour and you have to go and take out the cassette and then go and develop. So it was a very uh, cumbersome process. So when I joined his group, for three, four days he didn't talk to me. So people said he's a very peculiar guy, you have made a mistake. <laughs> I waited that for the day I said that, look, I have very little time, I have to do something. Then he said, okay. Are you ready to work in minus 80 degrees Celsius? <laughs> I said, I'm working in minus 100 degrees Celsius. Then he brought some clothing, very thick clothing from top to bottom. I did huge things. You have to go like this, you have to do like this. I started experiment, data collection. And from window you can see whether everything is going on or not. So, you know, over the period, you realize that you have to go for a few minutes, you can go inside just with one shirt and can do that. I was one removing the cassette, I was wearing only one shirt. So this fellow came and saw and then he made such a noise. And then he was giving a lecture somewhere. He said that nobody was ready to work as minus 80 degrees Celsius. I had a guy who was ready to work with one shirt. Somebody said, one shirt? He said, you wanted him to go without shirt. So, <laughs> so that sort of thing. So we got some very exciting results from this. But why I'm saying this, there was a time when we were struggling like this. But if you see this case, there are two substrate, one substrate, this, one substrate, this. So if you don't give this substrate, you can observe intermediates with this substrate automatically. You add this to this enzyme in the crystalline state. If you make crystallization with this, you will observe the complex. So it is like 
the system is so fantastic that when you can observe complex with this substrate, and if you don't give this substrate, you give this substrate, which is not converted, you can observe this, and you can also observe intermediates. If your you can make your I will come along with this, so it's a very exciting thing that this system has scientifically many interesting aspects. Now this is the crux which is coronavirus oriented. See, this is a normal reaction. This is your whatever pathogen you have. And this is no problem. This process goes on and on. As to go to supply is not an issue. This is a variable concentration, often or good or bad. Enzyme concentration is response to the infection. So there is enough. So what you need is to produce this, uh, this antiviral agent here. You need enough of this substrate. You have no control on this. So can you think of another substrate which you could supply and convert it into this and support this and that becomes the best medicine? And eventually that might be once we you, you succeed in this direction. Now the question is, this reaction of this particular enzyme. You see, substrates are like this thiocyan or very small stuff. And also halogen, this halides bind to this. So it's it's the substrate binding site is such that it's very critical until it occupies a position closer to the H2O2 of the intermediate complex, it doesn't react, the reaction doesn't happen. So it has to be very precisely held with forces from both sides of the substrate. So it's a very critical reaction, you cannot predict this. So how do we think about substrates which could be added here? So all the times when things like pandemics of this kind happen, Everybody in the world talks about something. They give their wisdom, they give ideas, they talk of all sorts of things. So somebody was bringing out a statistic, look at Japan is a great country. There is no initial times. There were not many infections. What is the reason? It's a crowded country, yet infection rate was very low. And somebody said uh, one of the major differences is that Japanese consume, where is that? Down, consume much more iodide content, their diet, some seaweed food contain much more iodide substances and they consume much more and that is the only difference. And then you can see the, if you compare with one country which was devastated, ours was also at one time, but I think India is somewhere here, but this US and kind of things were very poor and they had what they had and people said it could be iodide. Now the question is, <coughs> It could be iodide very fine, but how does iodide produce that effect? Since uh, this is one of the ways we were thinking, so we thought why not may examine this with the lactobacillus, this particular protein. This slide I am showing not to show publication field. You might have seen this. So I am showing only because, you see, we might have been doing science gradually and slowly. But in recent times, because of impact from surroundings, we expedited efforts into becoming uh, anti-COVID scientists. So you can see some silly papers we pushed around, and the idea was that that we wanted to people we wanted people to know that we are talking about something which can be helpful to fight coronavirus. So if you look at the protein structure, this is a cartoon diagram. You might remember when Dinker joined NII, we showed the first molecular model figure of the antibody. Dr. G.P. Talwar was jumping. And once he said, hey, I don't understand, but there's a muscle dragging thing. So, <laughs> so <laughs> these days, whenever I see children from small universities, they know nothing about protein structures. But they definitely have one cartoon diagram. Some programs draw this. 
If you ask them what is this, it's a protein structure. So I think aesthetically, looking at protein structures is an entertainment to itself. So once in a while we should do this. So this is a very interesting, it's a channel, the, the heme group is at the, in the middle of the protein and the channel is very long. A lot of things can go into the channel, so I just show you. I think I will just show you the channel is very long. A lot of things can go inside. So many things go inside and come out. They don't become products. Either they inhibit or they come out. And very few may become product, but how will they become product? That's what one has to find out. Just to see that anything can enter here. It's mostly hydrophobic in both sides, majorly. So a lot of things can enter here, but everything is not reacting. They are binding this something, some affinity, but they are coming out. So the real thing coming back to this is this is a reaction. If we claim that this enzyme can convert iodide into hypoiodide, how to show? Biochemically, you may say that there is a, there is a defect, but how to observe? The only difference X-ray crystallography can make that you can observe things without any bias. And that is what it is that can we observe this product, this product? And if you can observe this product, then you have, you have convinced yourself that iodide is converted into hypoiodide. Now when enzyme and substrate reaction takes place, the product is made. And if the product is not consumed, very often product will bind to the enzyme in the substrate binding site or wherever, mostly substrate binding site. And if you do a structure of that, then you can demonstrate that substrate is converted, iodine is converted to hypoiodine, and there will be high point. That's one single interesting point of these investigations that at least reminds me Deepak is not here, or he's hidden somewhere. He had previously shown some very interesting results using his X-ray crystallography approach, where he showed, I don't know, he showed something very interesting. We can listen to him sometime. So, reaction kinetics and with density he demonstrated. Similar thing is here, if you see that. Now, when you move into this direction, how, how first you have to understand gradually, step by step, how, how things bind to this. So you have to observe that. So that long channel, I'm just showing the end side of the channel where reaction actually occurs. So you have to observe everything. When nothing is bound, you observe only what the molecules here. This density is an evidence. And then you see that there's a heme group in there, some water molecules here. This particular water molecule is critical because this is interacting with heme iron. The histidine is forming, co the corn is equivalent bond, water is forming. It is affected with this history. So this is a critical water, and that is where H2O2 comes and binds and displaces this water, removes this water. So this is an important site for reaction. So first step, H2O2 will come and sit here and interact with this, and intermediate will be formed. So you observe that when nothing is bound, it's a very nice density for water. You observe that, and then. You can also demonstrate, as I said, that if you don't add iodide, you can observe substrate. And also, it's very interesting here, if you put iodide first, if you make a reaction with iodide and this enzyme, iodide cannot be converted because it's bind at the substrate binding site. And then if you add H2O2, it has no hindrance to go and bind at its site but it doesn't attain an orientation to become an intermediate it's because of constraints from this block in the sense that H2O2 can only be produced for intermediate if there is nothing here to constrain. So you observe here H2O2 nicely binding, but orientation is less than appropriate, but it is a little bit under. So that is how, now you see that you check thiocyanate is substrate, known substrate, 
it is by Ishmael, this is where the so you're take, getting an idea as to where substrate is actually located. If you have to eventually think of designing it, here we are not talking about any reader or substrate. So you need to know how the substrate is bound and how it is held. So you can construct something which you can supply when there is a requirement of substrate by this kind of reader. Then you see when product is not consumed, product also binds here nicely, and you observe that. So that is that's all you are gaining knowledge. And then you do, if you make a complex with iodide, where you use ammonium iodide, I change the orientation so that this view looks better. So you find a lot of iodide ions in the channel, but they are not converted because there is no H2O2 there. So now coming back to this, the point, the crux is iodide. Can it be, is it really converted by this enzyme into hypoiodide, or is there some other mechanism by which it is contributing to antiviral effects? And that is what you need to show. So this is some, some very so preliminary elementary sort of thing. When you combine this, this enzyme with H2O2, and this is a modern substrate, which you can sort of measure spectrophotometrically, you see this kind of reaction for it. When you add this iodide here, before H2O2, you see product level goes down, so there is some inhibition. Some inhibition in the cell that iodide is binding fast and blocking the appropriate orientation of H2O2, and hence intermediate is not formed, the complex is, the product is not formed. And then next time, you have Lactoperoxidase with H2O2. So it forms an intermediate, and when you give iodide, it forms a product. And if the product is not consumed, it may remain bound to this enzyme as a substrate binding site. So here, iodide is binding there, here, product is binding there, and of course, when you don't have these things, there's a standard love with H2O2 or a ABGS or anything, anything again. So the, the real observation is here, just to support what you observed that time. You see, if you do this, the, the reaction, we did this, this is what was crystallized, and how do you see this? So, when you do the structure of protein, protein molecule is placed, and you see in the difference map, some kind of density in the binding site, is a heme group. This is the substrate binding site. You have some four positions and density is more than, in our terms, more than three sigma. So, the obviously, you don't want to bias your cell. So you put iodide atoms at these positions. And when you do iodide atoms and then calculate, then you see residual density, iodides are here, but you see residual density here, here, everywhere. Wherever you put iodide, when you define the iodide, you start seeing residual density. It means the density is more than iodide. So that is critical. And then you into this, you place hypoiodide. And when you do this, you can go back and place in the in the original map also. So original map is the hypoiodide you define, is perfectly defined. So you followed. This is one thing in crystallography that there cannot be a bias. And that's what the quality of this particular science is. So this is how you prove that, that you are actually observing hypoiodide. So you are demonstrating that this enzyme is converting iodide into hypoiodide, which is antimicro, antiviral. And that is how it must be treating, it must be fighting in the viral and also of course bacterial infection. So then you see very clearly that hypoiodide ions are present in substrate binding site. So this is a proof that iodide is converted by this particular enzyme into hypoiodide. Hypoiodide is highly antiviral. Yes. Yeah. 
it will definitely give it. Any substrate product will give it enzyme if it is not consumed. So, so here, yeah. So it will inhibit definitely there. Really, that's what we showed in the curve also. So all cases when you have enzyme substrate reaction, the product has to be utilized. If the product is not utilized, that will influence the activity of enzyme. Very often it will inhibit. There is no question. Please. More previous? Which one? Oh. This is 2 FO. What's the difference? Okay, okay, okay. You see, I don't know what's your background. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> so when you obtain your structure, so once you have observed data, which you have in the experiment, and once you have got the model, you have the coordinates. So based on these coordinates, you can calculate structure pattern for all the receptors behind the data. So FO is observed the structure factor, the square of the intensity you observe, and FC is calculated. So when you are saying FO minus FC, only those things which are not part of the structure will be visible. When you say two FO minus FC, so FO is more visible. So the one which is based on observed data will be seen and less will be seen on the uh, on the one which is left out. So this is like in, in a simple term, this is like an FO map. So this is FO minus FC. So this is the map after you have put in things for which density is shown. And this is the map for which the remaining things will be visible. So this is what it shows that these things after you put your model, will not explain, will not uh, use in calculations, then you see the density. But once you have put them, then you see density for them also like other parts of things. So this is an actual, actual evidence that iodide is converted into hypoiodide. And that is the main, main point to, to say. So this is how you now you can claim that. We don't have time to look at it. We have not done this, but of course that will change the situation. Okay, so the idea was whether we can observe this or not. See, see now, so what you can say, the, the point highlight of this is that, so we can say that in addition to converting thiocyanate, which is known substrate for this protein, we can say that iodide also is a substrate which is converted into hypoiodide, and that is antibody. That is the point. So here in this figure, you can say that this is one natural reaction which is going on, which is supplied with your body. This you are adding here. So you are adding to this, and you may be able to show this each more iodide, you will not be infected by this virus. And this may be even more potent than the vaccine in this sense, because this is right there at the entry point. Your nose, your mouth, the enzyme is there in those secretions. It only needs this additional substrate and then you are in a healthy mode. So this should become, now there are many other things we have tried, I don't want to show them here, but this is the crux that unlike drug discovery, we talk about inhibitors, we talk about drug molecules blocking functions. Here you are supplying substrate to produce the product, which should be. Okay, so this slide, of course, uh, has come 
unfortunately, unfortunately. Once upon a time, I had so many people in the justiciar. Now I have a smaller group, and then so the life goes on. So this is just I wanted to share. So I think we can discuss now. We can discuss G and Ramachandran, maybe more than this. So thank you very much, Neil, and thank you very much, Dita. Very important. We have been found to be very effective. Very effective. Yeah, very because of this concept. Yeah. Totally agree. I think we all do that. Yeah. And this is definitely very effective. Yes. Because earlier doctors they used to put the you know this problem the they they were not really showing antibodies. They were using the cotton which is like this something similar. So and that I think that was a concept that this concept matches. Yeah. I think beta reading is in itself antiviral. Yes. Yeah. It was pleasure to you meet second time, first time I met you at Banastri University. And that time uh, I heard your name lots uh, about T.P. Singh, T.P. Singh, but I never knew that you are the T.P. Singh. <laughs> the same T.P. <TV> Singh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and then what it was pleasure to hear your, uh, their talk, the wonderful here you here. there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you have correlated the like international data with your research. So first time I have seen mostly what we prepare our seminar about our talk. We don't compare with the worldwide. But that was very inspiring that you have done some different thing. So here, uh, 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 like you, you work in the photosynthetic lab. Oh, this was not photosynthetic lab. <coughs> Photos <coughs> photosynthetic happened to be one from the mm. neighboring department. Yeah. So, you know, there was a controversy. Mm. People complained by Hoover got Nobel Prize. Mm. Okay. So, why uh, Ramachandra didn't get Nobel Prize? Yeah. They said that protein was from some other lab and things like that. Mm. So, anyway, that lab was one of the best labs, one of the best at that time in protein <coughs> crystallography, mm. the number one lab. Mm. So, uh, it was like that. So the 16 Nobel Prize has been given in photosynthetic research. So if you would have carried out it further, it would have been 17. Actually, I must tell you that I was the one who collected the data. Hmm. Somebody crystallized it hmm. and somebody analyzed the structure. Hmm. I was the one who collected data. But I should tell you some very small stories on, to sort of reduce number of questions. <laughs> I was so influenced by Jian Ramachandran. First, I went to Germany to do the structure of the collagen. So I was working on collagen fibers, but every time it struck my mind that there is nothing to match in the distance. And then my colleague there, I was in Berlin first. My colleague there in Berlin said, I said, I want to work on protein crystals, not on fiber, protein fibers. So a, a guy who was for three months in Hoover's lab, young guy like me at that time. He said, should we talk to Hoover? So we talked. So he said to Hoover that there is somebody like this who wants to work on the lab. He said, okay, why not? And he gave my number and five minutes later he called. He picked some guest house or something. So why don't you come? I said, I cannot come just now, I'll come on Sunday. He said, no, 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 I'm sending tickets, you take the night train. He forced me to leave the lab the same day I took the night train. And then he said, from this railway station, take a taxi, come to Marx Park. I went to Marx Park. Earlier time, this early, in the 70s, so on, we were very shy. You know? Those dogs are not so shy. Pushkar was never shy. He went to a lab, he was so friendly. So I was standing at the gate, lots of people were coming, they sort of smartly dressed and like this, not like. So I couldn't dare to ask them. A guy came on bicycle, wearing some red and jacket and so on. I asked him, where is Hoover? Can I, where can I meet Hoover? This guy picked up my bag and started walking away. I said, come on, who are you? No, I'm Hoover. So that's how my introduction was with him. 
I think he was an amazing scientist. He worked very hard. And at that time, he was the best scientist in Kirtan Kusum Gati. This is how I have seen, I have not seen people working hard uh, like him, but I should also tell you that after he got the Nobel Prize, his quality changed, his way of interpretation changed. His, he was not explaining in the same way. So I, I suspect that after Nobel Prize, you can only talk politics, not science. This is how I felt with him. An extraordinary scientist, and then he was different. Sometimes to the audience, I had to explain what he was saying. It couldn't happen, it could have not happened before. So not getting Nobel Prize is a great thing. You can completely do good science. Like said, Ramachandran did not do, that's an exception. You are right, sir. I, I know my boss was also after a Nobel Prize. He was between Israel and Palestine, he was ne doing negotiation. All the time. <laughs> yep. uh, couple of questions. Scientific? Scientific. <laughs> <laughs> One is that uh, in your, you have crystallized, you have solved number of structures which you think is one of the best uh, to your heart. And the uh, second question in the same, uh, this one. That By the way, this is a very nice question. Uh, and the second this is the this best question one can answer. Second hmm. question is that what was the most relevant clinically, uh, clinical structure where which you think has, can be taken further? Number one, I think this is a very good case to take it further. It's a very clear example. It's a <coughs> you are addressing a different mode of uh, therapy through this. And then we have another protein from the innate immune system which directly recognizes cell wall molecules with very high affinity. That is also very, very important. So many times it is understood that most of the proteins we work on, they have some uh, useful application. But these two, I think they are directly the best. This one and the other one which can be directed, because the, I didn't discuss that here because we didn't, can't take too much time. The protein that, which it binds to the cell wall molecules with high affinity, we found that different, same protein, different animal, mm -hmm. differs in affinity. So there's some mutation that have occurred. As a consequence of those mutations, the, their associations have changed. Some they attach to the monomer, some they have dimer. The dimer forms far more effective. So we could take a clue from those things that introduce those mutations or use the protein which is present in some animals with high affinity. So these are directly relevant. But I should tell you, I have spent enormous time in looking at the protein structures. Every time I have not published them. But spent years and years. It is lovely to get out of that. And that I consider is one of the biggest rewards of doing the structures of proteins. They, they don't like anything else. So that, <laughs> hmm? You get trapped. You get trapped, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you get some points in that, yeah. Sir, yeah, is it possible to soak in the iodine Ions and watch them turn into hypoiodine. Do a time resolved. Uh, this reaction with H2O2 is very quick. Okay. So the only danger is that you have to first add H2O2. And if this is crystallized, then this may not be too correct. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> we should consider yeah. this. One can find, can like pH, is it possible to find conditions of pH where the, yes, pH uh, is up where the reaction yeah, yeah. rate is reduced considerably? Yeah, yeah. pH is very sensitive. So only at pH 6 it produces thing, pH 6 to 7. I think it's good to look at this. Yeah. So one thing I also, I mean, if you, I mean, are also there in, like, 
around 150 millimolar cell. Yeah. So how the chloride will affect this formation? So nobody was asking this question that you have chloride, bromide, iodide, fluoride. They all go inside and come, come out. Only iodide is converted. The reason being that, and he's made a beautiful slide, that iodide is held in a position because of some, the, the shape of the substrate binding site is such that the one of us contact can hold iodide at the required position appropriately. Whereas chloride and white cannot slip out. That's why they have not converted into chloride. Once we wanted to see or wanted to challenge, so many times I feel, I felt, I felt to go to you many times, to Deepa, to everybody. You have many questions in mind yourself. With whom should you discuss? You discuss with your students, but sometimes you want to talk to your colleague who can give you some uh, additions. So once I wrote a paper just to get this kind of commentary from viewers, I proposed a vibe of chloride and then it showed it, it, it huge interaction occurred. It was very nice. So many times we submit some papers to get this sort of in inputs. But I think men, sometimes you should meet. I have this thing to, we still have some situation where it's beyond my mind, but we need to discuss to just to the colleagues and sometimes chemists also. Pavan can ask one more. Yeah, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought you would spare us in a normal area of talk, but yeah. Yeah. So, uh, in that design You can ask good questions and conclude. <laughs> <laughs> I was almost very scared when he said, I mean, I was asking another question. Uh, I thought he was going to say, which is your best student that you have produced? I was almost <laughs> running out of cover because I definitely knew it was not me, and I did not have the guts of facing the answer. <laughs> but any case, <laughs> so because he has so many right here in the crowd. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway. But second question is about, oh, regarding the enzyme kinetics. So does the order of addition uh, of, the, uh, of the substrate matter? It matters totally and highly. Yeah, because you saw the tunnel and... Absolutely. The SCO2 has to meet the has to reach the distal site first, has to interact with the heme and histidine and form that interaction. And intermediate has to happen, then only substrate can happen. It's absolutely necessary. So now I can pass to Bowen again. <laughs> Give him both the, both the mics. <laughs> He'll go <finish> faster. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, with the advent of uh, cryo and other uh, technology, for uh, now, is it possible for us to find out a natural interaction like SARC virus with uh, with the epithelial cell once they have interacted together? Can we really uh, theoretically yes, of course. Activity? Theoretically yes, but <coughs> we are not aware of many systems. Like we were not aware, of the picture is still there. We should remove this. Okay. <laughs> we are not aware of many systems, like the one here we got a wrong idea. Yes, of course, low temperature can do things. I didn't, of course, mention intentionally and deliberately and consciously about electron microscopy, cryo-electron microscopy. Eventually, ultimately, the science, the actual cosmography will prevail, eventually, as far as the drug discovery is concerned, and all those things are concerned. Any more questions? Yes. Um, no. No. Uh, I think yeah. Yeah, yeah. There is one from student. Let's go. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you for your presentation. This is probably a stupid question before I ask this because sir has already asked it. But when you say the order of the substrates matter. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, we pre-incubate before we crystallize. But the order matters at that point, or are we talking about crystallize and then soak the second substrate in that? 
You know the first step is with H2O2. This reaction is very fast and it's not very stable. Okay. So uh, soaking would have this. Maybe with pH we can do something and we will stop that reaction and then I, I write. <coughs> we have published one paper, one work, where we have a ternary complex. H2O2 is there, iodide is also there, substrate is also there. Both of them are simultaneously present in the site. They are simultaneously present, product is not made. The only reason we found that, the, you know, it's a very sensitive process of proton below here. Only, so only thing we found that the orientation of H2O2 is not very appropriate to proceed on the reaction. So oh. the product didn't come. There are many uh, aspects of this complex reaction. Which we're still unaware about. The biology is a big mystery. Thank Science you, sir. Thank you. I think it's enormous how nature does so precisely. You can't even understand. Thank you for the wonderful talk and the wonderful lecture on the topic as well and DNR speaking about him on the contribution and everything. So now I request directors with a small token of appreciation with the ICGB engraved. No, not cup. Uh -huh. You may have not. <laughs> cup the next time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bay is, uh, bay is T outside. So we have not outside the hall, behind the hall. Behind. Yeah, I always made up. Lawn. No. So all are invited to.